Okay, I tell you what, let's do. Let's fish these lily pads with this little Dahlberg diver. There's a couple of things we need to do. The first, we need to be real accurate with our cast. And the second, you gotta be able to trust that weed guard that we've tied on these flies. So let's cast this fly out there, see if we can catch a big old bass. Put on that lily pad and just pick it right off of there. We got a little more open water here. This time we can fish that Dahlberg a little more aggressively. Give it a little better pop. We'll cast that Dahlberg right in there at the edge of those lily pads. Let it sit. And then go ahead and give it a pretty big pop in there. Strip it and make that Dahlberg dive. Keep that rod tip pointed down toward that line. Make another cast in there. Just work the Work the cover. There he is. There he is. Right in that pocket. Let me get him out of there. Get out of there, there fish. Those lily pads. All right. All right. <laughs> there had to be a fish in that pocket. I'd like to introduce you to one of the most innovative flies that we've had come along for topwater bass fishing in the last 10 to 15 years. This is Larry Dahlberg's Dahlberg Diver. We're going to tie this fly using a 3366 hook, 20 pound hard mason monofilament. I like to use rubber hackle in between my neck hackle. The tail is regular neck hackle but it's wide and webby neck hackle that we use for bass flies. We're going to tie the body out of deer hair and we're going to use two colors of deer hair. This fly will absolutely walk and talk in the water. Let me show you how to tie it. Let's start this fly using a 3366 Mustad hook. We'll put a 20 pound hard mason monofilament weed guard on here. Let's take some 3 aught yellow thread, put a jam knot right at the point of the hook right up on top of the shank and advance it about a quarter of an inch. Get some rubber hackle. Use about three strands of white, three strands of yellow. We'll just wrap it right around the thread. Pull it right up on top of the hook shank. Take one wrap of thread and we can just pull that rubber where it stretches out a little bit and just tie it down. Just over wrap with thread and advance about halfway up the hook shank. We'll trim that rubber off where it's, we don't want it to look like a toothbrush. We want it where it's staggered just a little bit. Okay, let's select some neck hackle. This is a grizzly neck butt. We want to choose wide and webby feathers but we don't want the stem to be absolutely unruly. Let's select about six of these out of here. Let's even up the tips. Okie doke, we'll snip them off. Same distance. We'll grab them where three on each side and each one of them curve out. We're not going to trim any of the fibers off this stem because we don't want them to splay on top of the hook shank. So we'll just put our butts where we cut it off. We'll take a couple of wraps back. That way they're going to stick right on top of the hook shank. Now we can pull them to either side. And we can finish wrapping back. Every time you make a wrap on the near side, just support these feathers a little bit. And the far side, do the same with those feathers. And advance the thread back. And right here, we'll tie this off. We'll tie this 3 aught thread off. And we'll cement this whole area with flex cement. Okay, let's change threads. 
want to get a thread to do our hair work with, you can either use size A rod wrapping thread like I use, or you can use size A monocord, either one. Put a jam knot right there, and this is the mid, about the mid shank point. We'll wrap back just about a sixteenth of an inch to put our, our collar on. Okay, let's use this yellow deer hair, and we'll cut off a clump, again about the size of a lead pencil. Get the fuzz out of there. Get our little poodle brush and get it out if we can't get it out like that. Okay, and we'll put it in our hair stacker. And we'll stack the ends. Grab the tips of the hair. Trim off the butts where they'll be even. We want to can it right across the hook shank, just a little bit, right up on top. Take two loops wrap, pull straight down. Pull one through it. The thread pressure, if you hold it canted just a little bit, will ride itself and just roll it right around that hook shank. Hold it. There. Pull back. And we'll make a couple of wraps in front. That way it'll hold that hair up. We'll do the same thing with another clump, only this time we're going to trim off the tips of the hair. Don't need to use our stacker this time. Grab it, hold it between your thumb and forefinger, trim off the butts, trim off the tips. Hold it at a little bit of an angle, bring your thread forward, bring it right through the middle, bring it down. Take two wraps, pull straight down. One more and pull straight through. Wrap in front with thread. Now let's grab our hair packer. And as we pack this thread, let's just kind of twist it back and forth, just a little bit there. Okay, and pack that pretty tight back in there. Wrap in front of that hair again. Take your fingernail and push that thread back just a touch. Now we've got a nice collar started there. Let's advance our thread, and we'll spin the white hair on. And I'll even show you a little trick how you can get it really tight on top. Again, we'll get the fuzz out of here. Even it up on the butts and the tips. Bring it across at an angle. Take a second, wrap it around, pull straight down, and let it spin. Bring it in front, grab the hair packer, push back. Okay, now we're going to continue doing this with this white hair until we almost fill up the hook shank. But we want to leave enough head room where we can tie the monofilament weed guard off. Okay, and again we'll lay it in here, I'll advance your thread, lay it in here a little bit of an angle, come around, pull straight down, and just let it rotate around. And let me show you how you can tighten this now. Want a real compact body, one that floats a long time, clean it out, trim the butts and the tips, now let's just lay this right up on top of that hair that we just spun. Bring that down, and with your thumb, flatten it out. And just pull down your thread, one more wrap, pull down. Come in front, take your packer, okay now we really increased the density, density in that wrap. Advance forward, and we'll do the same thing all over again. One more time. Trim off the butts, the tips. Lay it in there a little angle. Pull straight down, let it go. Pack it.
Okay, now let's tie this rod wrapping thread off. And we'll trim this bug. And again, we'll take it out of the vise and we'll hold it upside down. When you hold it upside down, you can just grasp the hair on the other side or grab the bend of the hook, either one. Just cut straight back and cut all the way back. Now you notice I've, there's a vacancy right in here between our tail and where we first started spinning deer hair. And I did that for a purpose. Now I found out that these bugs, if they got that little space in there, they dive a heck of a lot better than if you fill that with your hackle or hair. Okay, now that we've got that nice flat bottom, let's grab our scissors. These are curved scissors. These really do come in handy. Let's start right at the eye, and we'll cut a symmetrical curve. Just in the white hair, right back to the yellow. And we'll turn it around, and we'll do the same thing on this side. This way again, we're, we're getting our reference cuts. We've got a flat bottom. Now we've got a good curve cut on each side. We'll turn that bug over and we'll take our razor blade. And you start right in here at this point and just follow that curvature with the razor blade. Just right back to the yellow and just go around. Now we'll bring our scissors in here. We'll push back on that yellow hair and come in there and just grab that white, just like this. Just right in there. Okay, now we'll finish our cut with our, we'll trim with our razor blade. Okay, we'll trim the collar. And we can just start over here and we'll just trim a little bit and just try to keep it the same distance all the way around from the white. Okay, let's put it in the vise. Put a jam knot right behind the eye. Bring our monofilament weed guard up through the eye. When you leave room, you want to leave room about the length of the eye of the hook. That way you'll have enough room to tie off the weed guard. And just hold that hair back. Okay, adjust the weed guard. Three inch to a quarter. And pull it back. Tie the weed guard in. Get your scissors. Run it right under that monofilament and snip it off. Okay, let's whip finish. Okay, we'll clip that thread. Put a drop of cement on there. And we'll roll it over and put a little on the bottom. Okay, there's something you want to do on Dahlberg that really does help. You want to take this Dahlberg. Of course, you, you, can, you can take your razor blade and just make it as smooth and pretty as you want to. After you get it to a place that you like it, Take Dave's flex cement, thin it down where it's just almost like water. Take your brush and absolutely just saturate the bug in the thin flex cement, especially the collar. What that'll do when it bug is, is stripped, it'll dive much better because that collar will be stiff. It'll make more noise and dive a lot better. Let's give those little Dahlberg a chance to dry and let's take it fishing. I bet you'll like it as much as I do.